It's a process of elimination. So if I shoot 100,000 pictures, they have to look at every frame. You'll take 50 or 100,000 photos for a 12 photo assignment. Why? The most I've ever shot on assignment was 100,000 images. Uh, I try and not torture my poor editors at National Geographic. I try and get anywhere from 20 to 40 or 20 to 50,000 images, which is a lot of pictures. That's like, say, that's over 12 to 1,500 rolls of film back in the days when we were shooting film. That's just torture to anybody to look at that much photography. But I, again, I've, I've visualized it, I've sketched it on a piece of paper, I've burned that image into my mind, and I may get close over and over and over, but I don't let it go until I get it. And either better than what I visualized or, or almost as good, but I just have to keep pursuing that. And that means I've shot that image, like, take any example, an emperor penguin flying out of the water coming at me, I knew that was a picture I was gonna take on that assignment. I got it the first day, probably good enough to publish, but it'd be okay, it'd be just an average picture in the story. Here is a situation that had a chance to be amazing. I shot it every day for 30 days. Every day when they'd, some penguins would come flying out of the water, I would be there to keep hitting it and hitting. So out of my 100,000 pictures on that assignment, you know, 15,000 of them are penguins flying at you and there's hundreds of keepers, there's only two that are really, really, really good. What was the difference between those two and the rest? Just that three-dimensional feel. I want to transport people into my images. I want them to be there. I want them to feel what it's like to be next to me with an 80 pound bird going 30 miles an hour, flying through the air, about to hit you in the head, water exploding off his body as he's coming out of the water. I want them to feel that. In order to do that, I have to have, I have to be close, it has to be wide, it has to be intimate. And how do the number of photos that you'll take on a shoot compare to other top photographers? Some, like the wildlife photographers, I mean, Flip Nicklin could go shoot 20 rolls of film on narwhals and come back with a successful story. He's so good at visualizing what he wanted to do. I'm not like that. I need to sketch and feel and work my way into that situation. And for me, it's a long process of feeling with my camera. Everyone works differently. So Nick Nichols is another you know, person I respect at National Geographic. He shoots up to 100,000 in a story, a huge number of images. Joel Sartori shoots 10 to 20,000. Ryan Scary, who I work with, shoots 10 to 20,000. So I just, I just, um, my editors, I think, see my hard drive come in. I could feel them. <laughs> I could just feel them. What's uh, the process for them in going through it? It's a process of elimination. So if I shoot 100,000 pictures, they have to look at every frame. My, my editor at National Geographic, Kathy Moran, the poor woman, she's, she's amazing <laughs> what she does, but she's like, you shoot every picture and I'll look at every picture. Never worry about shooting too much. And so she'll take 100,000 images and probably chop it down to 10,000 the first round, then down to 2,000, then she'll look at them all again, she'll get them down to 500 at that point, then I'll fly to the headquarters in Washington, D.C., and then together we'll look at the top 500 images and we'll discuss the merits of each, and, and ultimately we get down to our 40 images that we're gonna show the editors at National Geographic in a slide presentation. Everybody, all the, the mucky mucks at Nat Geo all sit in this little pressure cooker room. Wait, and, wait, and before you get yeah. to that point, it takes her how long to cut down all those photos? Weeks. It takes her weeks to sit there and cut down to go from 100,000 images. And most people go through their pictures and they go, I like this one, this one, this one. You can't do that. I mean, my, my Spirit Bear cover, I never liked the picture in the beginning, I, but I kept seeing it. I didn't like it, didn't, but it was good enough to keep around. And by the time we got down to the final 60 images, it's just like my editor looked at it and went, that's an amazing picture. And I'm like, really, why? And we discuss it and I'm like, uh, I'm like, yeah, you know what, you're right. Then you all of a sudden fall in love with it. Now it's one of my classics. And I did not like that picture, but I had to see it through the process of elimination 10 different times before I fall, fell in love with it. So that room in DC with the National Geographic editors, you come in with how many photos and set the scene and what goes on? You go in there with your images and you sit down in the very front seat. The director of photographer sits next to you uh, the CEO often quite often comes into that room. They invite their other donors and supporters of National Geographic in the room. All the other department heads are in that room. All of a sudden there's 40 people in that room sitting behind you and National Geographic is a magazine. They always say to us, you know, we pay you to make images, uh, not excuses. It better be good because somebody, David Dubelay just went before me. Flip Nicklin just went before me. Nick Nichols just went before me in that room and they're the best in the world at what they do. They're the Wayne Gretzky's of photography and all of a sudden you're up and it better be good. And 
you have to sit there and you have about 15 minutes to spin your tray of 40 images and you don't get to touch the remote. You're in the middle of saying, this was a unique situation where the Seawolf click, they cut you off. They just advanced over you while you're in the middle of talking and you talk about dry mouth, you just feel the pressure because it's like they're not interested in what you're saying or the picture's not good enough. They're all busy. They've got jobs to do and they don't have time to sit, you, sit and listen to you brag or pontificate or you know or, or make excuses or try and justify things they just start cutting you off as you're really? talking yeah so you're like this was uh, and still happens now no well, not so much now I mean I'm at a point now where I've you know when you've been there for 20 years uh, you've sort of figured out the system and uh -huh. you know that they're busy and you don't talk for too long but the nervous when I was first there nervous and young talk, 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 you know, trying to give them as much information as you can. And, and, you know, they're busy and they start cutting you off. I had one time, my editor, I came in with a story that was not very good on the Phoenix Islands. It was just a, a short assignment. The quality of the work wasn't great. You know, it was just a whole bunch of things happened. My editor and I, Kathy Moran, we weren't getting along about the story. She's, you know, she was calling me out and she was 100% right on, on the why it was weak. And I got defensive and I went into this room and, and Bill Allen, the editor in chief, he sat down with the remote. And every picture I started to talk to, he cut me off. And he cut me off for all 40 images. And I, by the time I didn't bring any water in the room, I forgot it. I was sweating, the room was spinning. I thought I was gonna black out. And I thought, my career's over. Like this dream I've been, just put 20 years into getting here, it just blew up in my face. I'm over, I'm done. And that's an awful feeling in that room with everybody sitting there watching you crumble. And um, turned out he was late for a meeting and he had to go and he didn't want to listen to me talk too much. So he just kept <laughs> cutting me off, you know, and, and the editor in chief turns around to everybody and they go, any thoughts? And everyone's like, no, nope. okay. Walk out of the room, no thanks, no pat on the back. Or, I mean, now it's, that's the beginning of my career. Now it's like, great job, wow, good work, thanks a lot. You know, we're, the, our readers are gonna love this. And so you do get a lot of positive praise, but it's, it's kind of like being in the NHL that you get a contract and you're paid to be good. You're not paid to do okay and get a pat on the back, you know? It's like, we pay you, you better deliver, it's a job. And, and it's, a, it's a scary place to work. When you work for National Geographic, it's like being in the NFL, except there's only one team. And every time I said, like, I wanna go do this story, like, who are you better than that? You know, who are you gonna knock off the team? No, no, he's our quarterback, no, he's our wide receiver. Who are you gonna replace on your team? And you start to think, yeah, I'm not good enough to replace people on this team you know you you have to earn your spot on the team and the only difference is you're only as good as your last story just like a, a football player you're only as good as your last season you know it doesn't guarantee you a lifelong career and the same same thing with photography